Welcome to What is Going Om for new thought from the edge of Om. Each week on Om Time's flagship radio show, veteran broadcaster, author, and media consultant Sandy Sedgbeer conducts thought provoking interviews with inspirational authors, artists, musicians, scientists, speakers, and filmmakers who are working at the point where spirituality and science meet consciousness at the very edge of Om. Here is your host, Sandy Sedgbeer. Hello. Over the years, my goal for this show has been to engage in conversations about books, research, esoteric wisdom, and practical tools and teachings with people whose expertise and knowledge can expand our awareness and elevate our consciousness. But as someone once said, music is to the soul what words are to the mind. And so every now and then, I've been moved by some special music to change the focus of the show from thinking to feeling from words that touch the mind to sounds and lyrics that touch the heart. Back in 2018, I introduced you to a new album released by English guitarist, songwriter and singer, Ted Turner, best known for his work with the 1970s rock band Wishbone Ash and writer, poet, musician and singer, Magella, whose professional abilities and unique musical styles blended so exquisitely They not only resulted in marriage, but also in pioneering a new musical genre that fans were quick to label New Age Soul. Tonight, I'm thrilled to welcome back Ted Turner and Magella to share the inspiration behind and sample some tracks from their latest album, Divine Timing. Ted Turner and Magella, welcome back to the show. Hi, Sandy. Hi, Sandy. It's good to have you back. Your first album was called Better Together. Your second album is called Divine Timing. What's the significance of those titles? Well, essentially, that's a really good question. I just feel like each album, as it's emerging presently, is it's almost like volume one, volume two of the same subject matter. All of our songs are really inspired by the fact that we are married, we are experiencing both this personal and very creative union. And each song really is asking us to evolve. You know, essentially the songs are like teachers who are awakening us to how we can develop our consciousness and hopefully have a positive impact on others. So Better Together really is sort of us discovering, learning about one another, moving through any challenges that arise in those early years of marriage. And then as we move into divine timing, we're looking at how our commitment has developed in such a way that uh, we know that we've become a proper couple so to speak. And what I mean by that really is that through the process of being married, through the process of being creative, we've discovered everything about one another that is going to assist us to heal, if you like, and essentially just grow into our greatest selves. So divine timing is really the point where we are aware of anything that challenges our authenticity. And now we can share that with others to hopefully have an impact on their consciousness also. That's what I would say. Mm. Ted, in a last interview, you said that playing your guitar, performing your music is a spiritual experience. Now that you and Magella are three years further on in your collaboration, your marriage, your life together, Is creating music still the same kind of spiritual experience for you or has it expanded along with your relationship? The latter, Sandy, definitely expanded, yeah. The uh, the deeper understanding between us, you know, our own synergy, that's such a powerful connection. And of course the inspiration really, I think for both of us, is what as individuals, what can we do that's effective to assist or help others? For me, a big inspiration, of course, was Bucky Fuller back in 1927. 
he basically was, he began an experiment really and to discover that what could he do that people weren't paying attention to quite simply you know just want the world to work so how mm. does this happen i was reading a un report yesterday of all the uh, statistics of what's going on with the planet the environment and i was really shocked to hear that even now 40 percent of humanity don't have access to clean water it blows my mind, really. I think, well, how am I supposed to trust what's going on here when you can't even get something like that together? But my point here is, is that's the overview of things. But before you can even get into that, it's your inner selves. You've got to change it from the inside on a personal level, get in tune with, then you can affect the change out into the environment. So what can we do? We'd like to spread some beauty in the world, inspire others, draw awareness, and this is what we attempt to do with the music. Yeah, some people march, some people post things online and you guys channel it all into the music. And as I said at the beginning, music is something that just goes straight through the ear and straight to the heart. We don't have to think, really. Although the lyrics in your on this particular album too, they do make us think and they do remind us in a really deep and non-confrontational way really don't go oh I don't agree with that what we do is yeah that's true that's so true which is a much nicer way of getting getting your point across to the world I, would agree. I think yeah. also the 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 actual music content as well is sufficiently challenging in that because the songs I wouldn't describe them as conventional I think they're very unusual, the actual composition itself. So I think it works on two levels as well, Sandy. You know, it's the lyrics, obviously, the poignant messages, but also the actual musicality is unusual. So just in that sense alone, it's drawing your attention in deeper. It's asking you to not just pay attention, but really, really listen. Yes. Yeah. The thing I like about your music is you can't pinpoint it. You can't say, oh, that band, that <laughs> duo, it's always going to be this style. It is, yeah. I mean, you guys have very diverse styles and I think that shows up on your albums. You've only got eight songs on this album. You had 12 on the previous one. How do you know when enough is enough? <laughs> How do you make that decision? Well, actually, that's an interesting thing because we were preparing to record probably another four songs, like you said, but we realized that there was so much music there already for the listener. We thought, well, you know what? I think we've done this already. We were quite surprised. I said, it's done. That story is uh, complete. Mm. So it's very much um, a feeling thing. It is a feeling thing, but it's also the fact that we don't do short. So the way the recording process itself takes us on this almost like a pilgrimage, really, a musical pilgrimage. And so we can go in with the idea that we essentially feel is the song, it's the starting point. But what we arrive at, the destination, is never, ever looks like how it began. And so the songs will take their, the songs are almost like the producers. And that's what I love about the recording process. It's so mysterious that you just go with it. You just surrender with it. And you, you allow all these rooms to be opened. I don't tend to think of a song in terms of verse, chorus, verse, bridge. I'm aware of that, but I tend to be more aligned to the atmosphere of what's being created and so we go into these rooms and of course we end up in a place where we've got a piece of music that is an extended length of time it's just like writing a play you want it to be perfectly timed so the listener gets sufficient rest a break in order to just process what they've heard mm. now you've said that every song on this album apart from one emerged from a poem. Is that normal for you? Well, it's evolving all the time because as we become more in tune as a collaborative team in every respect, then, you know, the design of the composition is changing and evolving all the time. 
But for me, it's a natural starting point because the poems essentially come from a spiritual practice. And I think I can speak for Ted here as well, words that come through, we generally feel are a download. Uh, we don't necessarily sit and compose around a theme. We have done that. We tend to go with the flow. For me, poems come through if I'm in nature or certainly when I'm meditating, when I'm in that quiet space, when I'm sufficiently still enough. I tend to refer to the poems that come through as, as the sister within, a sort of spiritual guide. And, and so it starts there, really, as a process of dissecting myself through this unknown assistance so I can sort of develop my own self-realisation. And then other times I might be making the bed and I just start singing a song that the melody, the words, everything are there, the shape is there. I go to the piano and for whatever reason <laughs> I just stick my fingers on the keys and... There it, there, is. It is. there it is. So it's well, a difficult thing to get your head around. You just have to yeah. trust. Yes, I can imagine. You've got eight different and really beautiful songs on this album. It's impossible for us to cover all of them. We've only been able to select three, and I chose them based on one, which is my favourite from the album, and two others that give a good feeling for the variety, for the variation here. So what we're going to do is we're going to play a segment, you know, a long segment, but a segment from one of your songs called Cruise in the Sky. After that, when we come back, I'd like you to tell us a little bit about the inspiration for Cruise in the Sky. So let's hear that now. They're always there Cruising the sky They're watching the i 
to that song they're always there cruising the sky watching over us with their third eye what was the inspiration for this i mean have you seen them have you seen them <laughs> <laughs> actually we have yeah we were in that <laughs> garden we were watching uh, one, this, one of the uh, stephen greer uh, movies his documentary uh, unacknowledged and repeatedly through the program he shows you these beams of light because essentially if that's how they show themselves they're coming out of one realm into another so briefly you will see a light and just to cut the story real short we're sitting out in the back garden we see exactly what we saw in this documentary uh, just swooshing right across the sky in a low arc uh, Magella asked me she says is that a shooting star I said I don't think that's a shooting star darling <laughs> But the initially, I mean, obviously that was a pretty amazing experience. This was, the words came through in a meditation. Literally, they dropped in. I don't know, it wasn't a long time, 10 minutes. The way I tend to remember these words is I just recite them like a mantra as each line surfaces. And then I just keep repeating. And then when I come out of meditation, I just write it down. But what I feel about this song, because you're always learning about what the song's about when, when it initially comes through, I can honestly say that I don't always understand everything that I channeling, shall I say, because I do think it's a form of channeling. But what I understand about it now as I reflect on the content is that we're not on our own and that there are these other beings of light that are potentially trying to adjust our awareness, our perception that we are also beings of light and that we can in fact have a very different approach to our life. We don't, we tend to have our own set of fears but the message that's coming through is that if we can be more curious about whatever the fear is, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's a natural fear or something that is just uh, not helpful that has existed in your mind for a long time, if we can begin to become more curious about accepting that that exists and we can just go into that in a more open way and surrender to it, then we can actually move towards being essentially kinder to ourselves and therefore we can be a universal family, a cosmic family and basically be a human race that has a a kindly disposition. So the whole process, everything that we went through from conceiving the words, the download, the composition, the experience in the studio, recording it, this I would say was the song that took the most amount of surrender and Ted can probably explain that best, the way he took the reins in terms of the production in the studio because it was very different to any other song. Well, Ted, yeah, we just, create, we just created the atmosphere really for that one before we put our imprint on it. What does this evoke for us, the others uh, out there? Magella, speaking of fear, well, that's what's been put upon us by the official story of UFOs. It was just a report that came out a few days ago from the Pentagon, you know, it was requested to do so. And of course, uh, what they generally promote is a fear factor. Is this a, sec a national security threat? Which 
What we're writing about is a complete opposite, is that what if the, any other form of life would actually come and benefit humanity, uh, raise our consciousness, awareness, give us the best of something that we're not even really uh, approaching yet as a collective? What if they could raise the, just change the whole spectrum, our whole um, paradigm really of thought? That's a possibility. Now that's a completely different concept. What a beautiful thing that could be. But uh, yeah, just back to the production. So the difference there was, yeah, with sound effects and all these uh, things we can do now with modern technology, just create that atmosphere of what we'd like to sit in. For me, the difference between Better Together and Divine Timing is that this is really all our energy. We uh, had some session musicians come in. We traveled to Chicago and had a bass player and a drummer uh, play our music. But of course, they're not part of it. They're not. They're they're hearing it almost for the first time, and because of their expertise, they can complete their task very quickly. But it doesn't have the same um, sensitivity, and that's the mm. that's the key word yeah. here. Both yeah. uh, Magella and I are highly sensitive people, but that we are, we're also that comes through as our musicianship, and we play off each other. So for us to do all the parts here. Magella and I switch the uh, task of playing bass, whether it's on the keyboard or a bass guitar. So to follow this from beginning to end, from concept to production, the engineering, everything, it was all our energy. That had a much more uh, intimate a result. And that's the, I think that's the main difference. Mm. And what I enjoy about this song as well, Sandy, just to add one other point, is through this process, because we created this atmosphere, it's almost like, you know, when you're in a class with a really good teacher and before mm. you even get the objective on the board, you're having fun because the vibe in the space is just freeing. It's freeing, it's ensuring. Basically, the way that the performance came through, when I listen to this song, I always feel like I'm transformed back into to, um, a childlike existence. Mm. The innocence, the good vibe, the lightness of it all. We don't have to get heavy about things that might seem heavy. We can just approach it with a lightheartedness. And I think it, the others, that's their lesson as light beings. Yeah. Can we just tread a bit lighter on this earth? Yeah. And I think you're absolutely right, you nailed it there. It does give you that buoyancy. Yeah. And, you know, there's nothing sort of, you know, scary or heavy about that song at all. It, it's very uplifting. And, and it's very sort of, it makes you want to move around. And, um, yeah. yeah, I can see children <laughs> responding to that really well. So tell me about your track, Woman, because you spell this with a capital W and a capital M. This is the coming together of the masculine and the feminine. Obviously, a man and a woman, Ted and I, come together as opposite sexes. However, as we all know, we're aware of that these energies exist within each and every one of us. And when we move beyond those labels, which really, the, the, the words are centered around the Buddhist message of how much we can love, how much we can, we can live gently and how gracefully we can move through life, we can let go, we can be in the moment. Whether it's a good moment, a difficult moment, let go of it, make it equal. And I think that relates really well to how we balance our own masculine and feminine energies. Basically, remove the labels and move into a state of non-attachment in order that we can feel whole and I think that's very relative to our journey as well together. When you're in that younger stage of love, you can tend to feel that the other person, they amaze you so much that you feel that they're completing you in a way. But through our relationship, you know, I've very much discovered that all that Ted does, and hopefully I do for him, is he enables me to for everything about me to come through, to emerge, for me to be the fullest expression. So he's like a catalyst. He's not completing me. He's just enabling me to realize that I am complete. And the song really is, has that message at its core that even though we're all different and we have these seemingly opposite energies existing within us, 
that actually it all serves a bigger picture. And if we can see that in us and balance that in us, then maybe we can move into a union that, that feels real and where you can be everything you are, the good, bad and the ugly, and actually not make a big deal of it. Just flow. Just flow with everything that you are. Don't hold on to it. And therefore, lightening up your whole, your whole existence, really. So that's where it came through in terms of lyric, lyric-wise. And of course, what's interesting about this song, Sandy, is that this song, from what I can remember, did not have a chorus as such. And when we actually, these are the strange things that happen when you get into the, the red light goes on. So the red light's on, we're in it, we're going with it. All of a sudden I started singing these words, which felt very much like the weight, the gravity of a chorus. Oh, we're here now, we're at the hook. But this was unbeknownst to me, <laughs> you know, this, this was emerging from me for the, for the first time. So much so that when I went back to actually, well, what did I do there? What was that? And when I went to go back to try and play this, I couldn't. I actually had to use that recording to teach me how to sing the chorus. So the whole process of writing cannot really, for us anyway, it can't be separated from the recording because it's like we go into the studio with a sketch, we come out of the studio with the, the shape, the actual shape of the song. And if you think about it, that's what we're experiencing on the inside. You go inside, you go in deep and you discover what energies exist there and you come out of it, hopefully, feeling clearer and feeling stiller and just more able to um, accept, accept all of what makes you you. So that's what the song is really, acceptance of one another, our differences, but again, starting with you, what's going in, on inside you. Yeah. Well, it's a shame we can't play that one, but we, you know, we only have so much time. I want to move on to my favorite song, which is uh, Like Never Before. And I like this one so much that I kept five and a half minutes of something that's just over six minutes. So we're going to play through to the break this particular track. And when we come back, perhaps, Ted, you could tell us a little bit about Like Never Before. So let's hear okay. that now. you love 
tolerate Where this love is always hate Yet the truth is at stake Welcome back. Yeah, I can understand why people have started talking about your music as new age soul. I mean, it's filled with soul. And that last track, I've got to tell you, this has been in my head all day long. Every time I become aware that I'm singing it in my head without even knowing the words, but I just love that one. So what was the inspiration behind that one? For me, Sandy, that goes back to... Um... Uh, Bucky Fuller again really because he conveyed to me the importance of what an individual the power an individual can have We all have that power essentially. I mean, it's common that when we encounter obstacles we impatiently perceive that there is no point uh, in continuing to pursue a, a path that feels authentic and the message is suggesting that the seeming blocks are the redirection to the countless ways of making a difference. And of course, we're facing this global environmental crisis and it can be overwhelming. You know, how can I make a difference in all of that? So it, it is drawing attention to that. It's a drawing attention that maybe we've second guessed our life calling, maybe even believing that it's not possible to find our most valuable contribution but we're asking all of us really to stop and reflect on the power of your own voice to move into the truest version of ourselves you know in every aspect of our life yeah. that it's beautifully said Ted. really i mean in a way what you've said is what it actually reflects because i could see this becoming an anthem I could see being played in stadiums. It's a sort of song that people would take up for a cause. You should send it to Greta Thunberg and have her play it every time she has a climate event because it has that capability to, you know, to really touch the soul very deeply. Yeah, well, you touch on something. Yeah, you touch yeah. on something important there. That's what... Yeah. Um, we are very much interested in interesting collaborations. We would be overjoyed if someone like Greta Thunberg would be, uh, you know, like to share the music that would help uh, causes. We're interested in that. So we were having a conversation with you the other day, Sandy. As we're talking, we had a message come through from Stephen Greer. Now he's about to have another documentary come out. It's just being suggested that possibly they may use uh, Cruising the Sky for one of its projects. So it's things like that that really uh, sort of get our, yeah. we're inspired by yeah. if we can uh, you, this, use This is what you're like. writing it for. Isn't yeah, it? exactly. You know? Yeah, yeah. Well, we don't have an awful lot of time. We've got about 10 minutes left. I want to play, before we reach the end, the final track on your album. And I want to play it now so that we can then talk about it. You know, we'll have a few minutes afterwards. This is a song that I know has been described as sensual, sexy, swampy, a meditative experience. So let's have a listen to that and see how people respond to it.
essential sexy swampy indeed that's the sort of thing you can see yourself dancing to in a nightclub somewhere you know it's very bluesy it's very uh, it kind of gets into the the bloodstream doesn't it and someone said as well it, it sounds like we're actually making love <laughs> which i thought was a really <laughs> lovely right. thing to say i can um, i can yeah i can see that yeah so this is this is quite different from the others it's called flow tell us a little bit about how this one came into being so we wanted the song to sound like it was flowy. We wanted to actually capture well, what does it feel like to flow. As ever, we don't really have a prescribed way in, in which we're going to make this happen. But we, what we did do, there was a, a theme throughout this album that we wanted to include sound effects from, if you like, our own environment, the, the natural soundtrack that we have playing in our home. So the, the music at the beginning and at the end of the song is actually our fountain in our back garden. Ted just recorded that sound just really to enforce the whole idea that everything is in continual motion. This trance-like energy that I certainly feel when, I, when I'm listening and, and when we were creating the piece for me, that's centred around what I think is that a signature aspect of our music that you mentioned dancing, the actual voice and the guitar seemingly feel like they're kind of dancing with one yes. another. Yes. And so those energies, when they connect and weave around one another, they're creating a harmony that goes, for me, that even goes beyond the actual notation. It's just something about the syncopation and the, way, the breath in between and the way that we bounce off one another, pick up from one another, that you can't... I don't think that's something... That isn't something we planned. It's just something that happens in the way that we interact. So the song is about just being with, in the flow, allowing... Just allowing whatever comes through to be allow that to be your way of moving through life. I don't know whether Ted wants to add to that. Well, the, this track particularly, this was the first song that we actually recorded. Uh, so it's interesting it ended up being the last one on the album. But part of our musical style, the structure of layering. So we will play live together, we'll sing and we'll play the song through. And we'll say, well, that's okay, let's do another one. We usually do three or four takes and then we will listen back and then you can put them all together. So reviewing that, it wasn't actually put together in this manner, but then when you do put them together, something sort of magical comes out of it. You think, wow, look how that's come with that. There are two totally separate pieces, but it's really saying something. So as I say, that's part of something that we've discovered during this recording process. Very effective. Mm -hmm. Magella, you said something about you wanted to give people the feeling of the flow. And uh, mm. I came across a quote earlier which taps into that perfectly. Music is what feelings sound like. And <laughs> that describes that, that particular song to a T. Yes, it does. Mm. Yeah. It, I think also, um, Sandy, what I'd add to that is this sort of new age soul that we came up with. How do you get there? You get there essentially through good vibes. And I think that's what flow is. Flow, you know that you're in the flow because you get this sense of you're in your heart. For me, personally, the heart is what knows. That's my innate knowing. Then your higher self, whatever you want to call it, your soul, can remember and that's all that we're trying to do, really. We're just trying to remember to extricate all the machinations of the mind, come back to this place of just centeredness, stillness. And that's what I feel when I listen to that song. By the end of it, I just feel like I've had a beautiful meditation. I just feel in a place of clarity. As I say, it happens really, oh, we'll, we'll make this song about clarity. It's, the songs are always awakening, teaching us. That's the way it happens. We are going to have to leave it there. I just want, Ted, for you to say one last thing before we leave, and it has to be very brief, and that is, what do you want people to take away from this album? 
we're, you know, we're all involved in this cosmic wave. We just mentioned the word wave, but uh, the, this ultimate wave being love and that uh, it's all transmissible. That's all we're doing. We're doing it through music. You do it through your words. You know, we all have this capability. And uh, of course, just be kind to your fellow man and every animal and just be aware of this beautiful planet, respect it and take care of it. We've got to stop it right here, I'm afraid. Yeah. Ted Turner, Magella, thank you. Thank you for letting us share your music. And if anybody is interested in knowing more, they can get your album at Ted Turner and Magella.com. Thanks for joining us thank today. You. I've yeah, love really you, Sandy. enjoyed thank this you. show. That's it for tonight's show. Um, I hope you'll tune in at the same time next week. Till then, it's goodbye from me. <laughs>